Today you join me on our way across the county, because I've got to pick up a cheap PC I want in an auction, because recently I've been utilizing a lot of older software and programs and even hardware really, and unfortunately 9 times out of 10 I end up throwing together a random PC just to boot an older operating system and do one simple task. So today we're going to render that problem obsolete with the help of an old Dell computer. But not just any Dell computer, no, today we're picking up one I grabbed with a very dodgy name for just one pound. So, this right here is the Dell Inspiron 530, and honestly this looked to be the perfect solution for the problem that I've been having recently. I just needed a system to be absolutely overkill for Windows XP, sort of an ultimate system, and this is easily upgradable, has plenty of expandability by default, and other than the fact it was sold to me as a Dell computer hard drive, which was also not listed as a computer, it was listed as a monitor, it's a bit strange, but hey, if it gets us a good deal then that's what really matters. I will say though that this thing currently does look pretty grim, and I haven't tried to turn it on yet because I've just got it out of my car, so why don't we go ahead and see if this thing works. Turns out this is one of the easiest PCs I've ever owned to diagnose if it's not working. It gives you a big old orange light of death. That's right, a PC that gives you a light on the front, much like a console, to tell you something has gone wrong, and that's exactly what we've got here which probably explains why the seller was so keen to tell me that he'd refund me if I had any issues. Because he already knew it didn't work. I'd imagine that it was already broken for a while and they just thought maybe if they sell it under the wrong category it'd make it ineligible for a refund or something like that. But what exactly is going on inside because there's something not quite right here. Now let's get this side panel off and see what's going on under the hood and it seems like as soon as I got it open I saw something that screamed red flags. Dell is renowned for using FSP and Dell to power supplies, very high quality ones and they very rarely go wrong and they're a go to choice of mine when I actually need to buy a used power supply. They however do not use dodgy power supplies that say 500 watts on the side. Especially when you realise that this has got no branding on it whatsoever, so my first thought was, oh no, this has probably killed the system. Having already dealt with this issue earlier in the week on a repair job where they'd use something really really terrible and quite a powerful system, I was expecting quite a few components to be dead. However, this power supply was able to boot up the system and actually turn on, giving me a little bit of hope that maybe not every part was broken and maybe the power supply hadn't killed everything just yet. Really though, the only way to test for this is to rip everything out of the system, turn up the tunes and diagnose all the parts as there must be something going on here that's stopping our system from turning on properly. This is where things get a little bit strange though as after reseating the CPU and sticking in 4 fresh sticks of RAM it seemed to post absolutely fine, albeit the CPU didn't seem all too happy and did hang a few times which I figured might be damaged from a voltage spike from that old power supply but CPUs are generally pretty hardy, I don't often see them die and I did move to another CPU which seemed to fix this issue but I'm still going to keep that old processor on hand because it's very odd to see that kind of issue with a processor. But once this was all sorted and everything seemed to be working fine and stable it seemed we were all good to go. When I say good to go though I mean solely components wise as the actual state of the computer is pretty dire. So why don't we make some minor improvements to both the cleanliness of the PC and a few upgrades here or there. See, we're going to be replacing that old and broken Pentium, or sort of broken, it's a bit unstable Pentium, with a random Core 2 do I just had lying around. This is the E8400, a very nice CPU from the Core 2 Duo era that is absolutely overkill. It has two cores at 3GHz and a whole load of cash on board, and the best bit about it, it is currently dirt cheap. If you're going to build an XP PC nowadays, you really just want two cores clocked really really high and you know fast cores at that. These things sell for a pound and under on eBay a lot of the time especially if you follow some of the auctions but in other news we also need a graphics card to go with that and we'll be using a Radeon HD 4850 I picked up broken a good few years ago 
The reason it's broken, a tiny little piece of the fan has actually broken. But when I stress tested this when I bought it, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. All in all though, it's not exactly a great card for today's uses whatsoever, even when you throw modded drivers on them, which I did do at one point, but it didn't run all too well. But for Windows XP, for older titles and software, it's once again absolutely overkill. And it's got that classic Radiant look, which is pretty cool, you know, the flames and the blower cooler design. Other specs wise, we're going to bung in an old Cooler Master power supply to replace that utter junk, which is now going to join the other random power supplies in the junk pile. I did use a 120GB SSD which was saved from the bin because it's just running one of those weird M2 to SATA adapters and that's going to make for an awesome little boot drive. Everything else is staying pretty standard, but it wouldn't be a real budget bills video if we didn't get straight round to throwing this all together, getting it cleaned up and making a really awesome cheap computer. There we go, all turned on and working. And total cost wise, it didn't really cost me that much all in all. I paid one pound for the computer, not much in fuel to go and collect it, and I probably paid around a pound for two Radeon HD 4850s, both listed as not working. The E8400 is out of a scrapped computer, but you can pick them up online for a pound, usually with free postage. I'd say the power supply is definitely overkill for a system like this. I'd usually opt for about a £7 FSP unit, but really, I could make the money back selling the old processor to someone that might need it. Maybe I could stress test it and see if it passes on another board. I have also got the RAM out of this system, which was tested and working. Virtually everything from this PC seems to work absolutely fine. So this PC, total cost to me has been a pound. But really, you could throw together a system like this for well under a tenner. You could pick up a system like this for well under a tenner. These are not expensive systems. But really, it's not about the cost. This entire system is about getting Windows XP installed and working. So while we do that, let me talk to you a little bit more about why this system matters to me. So, Windows XP is the sort of operating system that I hold on a holy grail, and recently I have been going further and further back into obscure software and hardware that simply doesn't play nice with modern Windows anymore. A couple of videos ago, it took me far too long to achieve one simple task, and I ended up throwing together an entire PC to do that one task. It was worth it, for me, because I wanted that task to be done. But I do this so often just to achieve little things that I might as well throw together some sort of overkill XP system which is here to run exactly what it says on the tin, run XP. On a less obscure use case, there are some titles that simply run better on Windows XP. They don't need to do anything specific, they just run better on XP than they do on Windows 10. But without the authentic XP experience, you aren't going to be having that great of a time in certain instances. So for me, this is sort of my obscure software beast. Windows XP is the operating system I grew up using and for showcasing a lot of the tech from that era on the channel. But really, it's just an operating system I'm always clambering back to. It's got a lot of advantages and a lot of things I use on a frequent basis that I simply can't do on a modern computer. But I'll definitely be touching on those later on in the video and showcasing a tad now.
really you probably get the idea that all these titles run absolutely fine on this beast of a PC. Which isn't anyone's real surprise here, but I will throw up a few benchmarks for you before we get into the nitty gritty software side of things and the rest of the XP story. These benchmarks are not about modern titles, as this PC isn't really capable of running any titles that are remotely modern. CSGO is a prime example of what is not going to run on this type of computer, but that's not why I threw this together. Not that it can't play it somewhat, but it's just not designed for these types of games. This is more about getting some titles that will run nicely in an XP era environment. SimCity 3000, although not a hard game to get running, just feels so much better to play on this PC. And when you lose as much time as I did just playing the game trying to get some footage of it running, it shows you what is good about games of this era. You can lose a lot of time to them. They are just fantastic experiences. And not saying you have to spend hours of your life investing into them just to enjoy it for a little bit. Now I'm not going to lie that this game does run pretty good on a modern operating system, but it has zero issues when it comes to graphical bugs or resolution changes that I have had on a newer operating system. Titles like Fable not only run fantastically, but don't suffer with any of the bugs that can occur on the later operating systems. Mostly down to playing video files in the menus, which isn't exactly major, but still another title that runs perfectly on XP and has a few issues on newer operating systems. Given that I've been playing this game a lot more recently, there's no reason to not play it in XP, and HD resolutions and higher settings are no issue whatsoever for this system, as this is a great PC port in general and just happens to run even better when you play on XP. Even Crisis, which I suppose is a title that works absolutely fine on modern systems, admittedly only really utilising Cores 0 and 1, something that we actually have on this system, works absolutely fine on Windows XP, which should give you an idea of just how overkill this system is for older titles. It could suffer in certain instances, which is understandable given that I'm playing the game in high definition with very high settings on a PC that was meant for much less intensive things. But when this system runs Crisis this well, it's no surprise that every other title I'm going to throw at it is just going to run absolutely fine. Now this is one area where I ran into some issues, and although ATI cards are awesome for DirectX, there are a few finicky points there some games only want to work on Nvidia hardware. Thankfully I do have a very low end 8800 GT on hand that I can swap to just to make sure things work, and I just wanted to test the infamous game Metal Gear Solid 2 which is a terrible, terrible example of a port and doesn't run well on anything that isn't near original Xbox hardware for some reason. I have no idea why, but here it is running absolutely fine with no patches applied whatsoever. I did have to tweak a few settings out of the box to get it running properly, but still, the game seemed to run absolutely fine, not without having to rely on some sort of downloaded patch from the internet, which is kind of why I wanted to build this PC, so I can just swap out between graphics cards from that era, and just try and run different titles that usually wouldn't run properly because they're terrible ports of games. Now I hope that explains a little bit better why I need a little system like this running, just to run some of those older titles, like Unreal Gold, Grim Fandango and anything like those, that'll run absolutely fine. Now I did show a few more titles at the beginning just as an example of some of the games that can run on XP, but a few of those run absolutely fine on. Windows 10 and things like that. Not that it's a bad experience on XP by any means, but there's no reason to use this system if they run fine on my main one. But still cool that it runs it so well. But that's not where this video ends, because it's nice to see it from a gaming perspective, but this PC isn't really meant for gaming, that's just an added bonus. See, this thing can do things my Windows 10 PC definitely can't do. Yep, that PCI card I added in when we were putting the PC together was actually an old school capture card, one that is apparently pretty good, at least from what I've been able to find out online. And I last used it to digitise some older video footage and was really surprised by the quality. The only thing I couldn't solely rely on was the system being a little bit unhappy when I was using Windows 7, and it only showed all its features on Windows XP which gave me more of an incentive to build a Windows XP system just for it, and it had a lot of unlockable extras in the Windows XP menus relating to quality, hardware accelerated encoding, a game mode, 
which is outstanding considering the age of this capture device. And all in all, as for capture quality, I'm using composite on all of these devices, as I don't really have many S video cables, I tend to have SCART cables, but still, it's great quality from composite, and it can deal with lower resolutions, interlay signals, and plenty of other things. Shame really that I can't use it on my current AM4 system, as it doesn't seem like any new AM4 boards actually have a PCI slot, and I haven't really wanted to go down the adapter route, which seems to be a trend that you really need to go for if you want to buy some sort of modern motherboard. I may try getting an adapter at some point soon though, but for now, as you can see on screen, the capture quality on older consoles utilizing a system like this is absolutely fantastic. My main issue I ran into was there was no real recording or streaming software compatible with Windows XP. Sure, I could use the proprietary stuff, but I didn't really want to use it. It felt a bit limited in certain ways. So this gave me a great excuse to dual boot another operating system that runs all kinds of software. Because it makes sense to have XP for the really retro stuff and something slightly more modern. So after a little while messing with the bootloader, I threw on Windows Vista. But before you come after me, it's something that dodgy software seems to like. It's in this weird era between XP and Vista where Windows XP runs the software, but only Vista seems to run it with some extra features and perks. I have no idea why this is, and admittedly with the final updates, this system is also overkill for it. It does run okay, not as well as Windows 7, but it runs okay. Vista is not an operating system I recommend people go out and use, as it is kind of a bloated and buggy mess, but it looks quite nice, and for some obscure software it's nice to dual boot. By now, I'm hoping that point I made earlier about the system being overkill makes a lot more sense. See, when I say it's overkill, it's overkill for all the tasks I want it to do. But it has the advantage of being something that I can mess around to test things with. I mean, I ran into some very strange issues earlier on with this system, where the system wouldn't boot with a graphics card, it would only boot with the iGPU. But when I put in a new hard drive, no clue why, it worked absolutely fine. Turns out that hard drive that I wanted to use with it, which came with the system, didn't work. Which for some reason it was really strange because once I'd formatted it, it went back to working absolutely fine. It's just one of those weird things that happens with old computers. I know the Hitachi drives don't have a great reputation, but still, this was very strange. One thing I really do enjoy about this PC though, is it's a genuine Windows XP experience. Which is strange, it's just an operating system that I used for a long time ago, but I never thought about it much, but there's something very special about it. See, Windows XP came with a lot of extras. Some would call it bloat, but the difference between this and the bloat we get on a modern operating system is that these don't take up much space, these don't run in the background, and these are actually useful. Things like Windows Movie Maker, which came with Windows XP for years, is something I spent far too much time with messing around when I was younger. It's not complex, no, but it can do simple jobs you might need it to do really well. Things like the old painter included, which admittedly is very basic, but it's still enjoyable to use. And you can also make your own screensavers in the display options. Is there any particular reason why that's useful? No, but it's just one of those things that you can do that you can't do anymore with an operating system. Everything about Windows XP just screamed fun, and I don't get it from that point going on forward. Vista was a pretty but unoptimized turd, Windows 7 was fantastic, Windows 8 existed, and Windows 10 does its job alright. But none of them really seemed to capture what made Windows XP the operating system I actually want to use. It was fun, it was compatible, and it seems like one of the few operating systems that just simply existed to improve on things in every way imaginable. Maybe it's just my nostalgia, or maybe it's just the way things are, but you had the corporate Windows 2000, which is fantastic, I've done a video on it. The thing is, it's just a little bit too corporate, and that's the main thing. It was revolutionary at the time, it's great and it's a stable experience, and Windows 10 going forward is a decent operating system, but I don't need Candy Crush and a ton of pre-installed apps that I don't want to use. I just want a tool that does them all basically and gets the job done. If I want something complex, I can always download it or install it or anything like that. I don't need bloat that I have to sign up for to use. Enough of my tangent though, it is worth noting that Windows XP isn't the best for everything anymore. As much as I love this PC, it's not exactly going to see much time online anymore, because you have to wave goodbye to security. But still, this XP PC does have a purpose. So if you generally do have older hardware you want to use, whether it's just for capture equipment or simply for games, 
why not look at saving an older Dell or just any older PC because you never know when you might actually need it. I know I'm going to be utilising this system a lot for older software and hardware, as I have been over the course of this video. All in all though, that was my ultimate XP experience. And yes, it was done on the cheap and it's not overkill with SLI and whatever the hell else you want to throw in. But this will run everything you need it to, and it'll run everything you need it to well. And most importantly, these parts are readily available and they are cheap. So I hope you all enjoyed watching, it was a bit more of a rambly one as I had a story to tell with this one. But I hope you all enjoyed watching. Good night. So, thank you everyone for watching. This took me a little while to get the direction down I wanted to go with this video. If you enjoyed this, you can always like and subscribe for more, and I will catch you guys in the next one.